flash memory is nowadays everywhere. You find that in USB drives, but also in your video cameras and digital cameras, you use SDHC cards and eight gigabytes actually is a small one these days. Smartphones use it, of course, to store all their data and MP3 players and so forth and so forth. So many, many devices use flash memory rather than hard drives. And therefore, it's kind of a straightforward idea to think about, hey, why not take a hard drive, remove all the contents and replace it with chips, with flash chips. And then this device is called a solid state disk. So to the outside, it's the same interface as a hard drive. It's just inside where we replace all the mechanical parts by chips, by flash chips, and then we end up with a solid state drive. The major properties of this are it's non-volatile as a hard disk. So those drives are more robust than hard drives, especially if it falls down. It's about 100 times faster with respect to random access. That's the most important property. The sequential access is also faster, but the random access is about 100 times faster. Again, it depends on the specific device. We will look at some examples in a moment. However, as a rule of thumb, 100 times faster with respect to random access. And interestingly, those devices very often also allow for parallel access. It's not only that those devices can handle a single request at the time, so they can handle many, many requests in parallel at a time. And therefore you get a huge number in terms of random I.O. We will look at concrete examples, concrete numbers in a moment. But let's look at some major properties before doing that. So one important property is that of blocks versus super blocks. What is that? A block is something similar like on a hard disk, it's like eight kilobytes of data, but there's also the concept of a super block. A super block is a set of blocks. Again, it depends on the concrete device, but nowadays it's typically something like 256 blocks. So that's what I depicted here. The big thing here, that's a super block, and it contains a couple of blocks, 256 blocks. And the problem with that is, you can only write to empty, freshly erased blocks. That's a sharp difference to hard disks. In hard disks, you simply overwrite any block if you want to write data to that device. In a, in a solid state drive, this is not possible. In a solid state drive or solid state disk, as it is also called, you can only write to empty blocks. And here's the problem. Erase happens at the level of super blocks, not blocks. That's important. So before writing to a block, you have to make sure that you find a block that is empty. If no empty block exists, you first have to erase a super block. So let's make an example. Assume you want to write a block. If you want to write a block, you first have to find an empty block. If such a block does not exist, you first have to erase a super block. And of course, you're only allowed to erase a super block if the data contained is not required anymore. So let's make the assumption that this super block, let's call it super block two, let's call it super block one. Let's assume that all blocks contained in super block two are not required anymore. In that situation, we are allowed to erase this super block two first. We first erase it, first erase it. Erase the entire super block. And second is you write to the specific block. So the second operation would be write block. Yeah, so second is on the block level. The first is on the super block level. Super block level, okay. So here in the second step, you can then write on any of those blocks. So the algorithm, the high level pseudocode for that is something like that. If an empty block is available, you write the data to that block directly. Else, it might happen that you possibly reshuffle or garbage collect data first. Why? Because if the blocks containing data are scattered over the device, it might be that you first have to collect blocks on a super block that can then be deleted. You can only delete a super block, of course, if the blocks on that super block are not required anymore. Only then you erase the super block and then you write data to the block. So 
writing a single blog, and that's what we're talking about, may trigger all of these things. And that is why SSDs have a considerable write amplification. So what is write amplification? That is the ratio of data physically written versus the data logically written. So the data logically written is typically a block, say eight kilobytes. But in order to be able to write the block, you have to do all that other work. You have to erase blocks or super blocks to be more precise. So super blocks are erased. Of course, erasing a super block then can be exploited to write many, many smaller individual blocks. All of that has to be factored in into the write amplification. So even if you assume you only write eight kilobytes of data, the device has to write much more data. And that is this cost for super block erasure. Then there is garbage collection, which means the SSD has to keep track on which blocks can be deleted, can be erased, which blocks are still containing data. Maybe it has to copy blocks from one super block to another to make room to defragment the data. There's a lot of work involved in that. Another effect here is wear leveling. So SSDs have the problem that they wear out over time, which means if you write over and over the same memory cells again, the likelihood of an error increases. So SSDs try to write evenly to all of the blocks in the device. And for that, again, the device has to make sure that all blocks are written to the same number of times. So it has to balance the write operation across the different blocks in the device. And finally, some of these devices actually use internal RAID-like structures. So they stripe the data over the different cells. They also have error codes similar to RAID 5 in order to cope with error scenarios. And of course, that again increases the amount of data written. So all of these extra costs have to be factored in into write amplification. So you may, may also call this side effects of writing. All of these costs are factored in when talking about write amplification. So one thing to be aware of when dealing with SSDs in a database system or also in an operating system is the following. So as we're replacing hard drives here by this SSD, the store should tell the drive if a block can be deleted. When you program a store, it shouldn't be like you overwrite a block when you want to write the new data, but as now you have these two steps, there's this erase, and then there's a write operation on the same block, that's an eight kilobytes block, then you should really tell immediately once you know that the block can be erased, you should tell that to the device. That's a huge difference to the hard disk, which doesn't require that information. But the SSD may exploit that information, of course, because the erase operation and all the garbage collection doesn't have to happen at the moment in time when the write operation occurs. This operation may be done when there is some time available when there's a low load on the device, then the controller of the SSD may already erase super blocks, may shuffle data around, such that once the write operation actually comes in from the store, the SSD can directly write it without doing the erase first. So you basically decouple those two times. That's what you want to do. So it's important to send this information one first down to the SSD as early as possible and then once the write occurs, the likelihood is way higher that you can directly write. And there's a command for that that you can exploit and that is called trim. That's a trim command and with trim you tell the SSD, hey, this block is actually not required anymore. You may delete it at any time. So in summary, what does the SSD controller do? It's similar to a hard disk controller, so it has tasks like mapping logical addresses to physical addresses. This is even more obscure, obscure than it already is in a hard disk drive. Caching is done, so there's a little piece of volatile memory in an SSD controller. Again, we have to be aware of those effects. If you write something, it doesn't mean that it was actually forced on the flash cells. If you want to make sure you send a flush command, 
a flush, a flush to the flash, so to say, is a flush command to the flash. Okay. And the third thing, of course, is remapping of erroneous blocks. This, this may also happen here, but this is all hidden. But in addition to hard disk controllers, you also have this RAID-like storage of data across different chips in the drive. And this is in conflict again with the erase problem. And as this leads to RAID-like storage, of course, is a variant of write amplification. So you write more, which means you eventually have to erase more. So this is kind of in conflict with the erase problem in an SSD. And of course, you, you, you garbage collect the blocks that are not required anymore. And as explained before, you rather tell the SSD whenever possible that it can trim, that it can throw away specific blocks. So here's a little overview on the performance of those devices. So those are SSD drives, uh, which means those are drives that connect to the hard disk interface. Yeah, there are different devices that connect to PCI. We will look at that in a different video. Here we're looking, just looking at flash disks connected to the hard drive interface. So here you see the write operation was in the order of 170 megabytes per second sequential write performance and then increased linearly to something like so 500 megabytes, that's what you get these days. So sequential read is still a little faster than sequential write, but it's getting closer and closer. So the difference used to be much bigger in the past, but the two numbers are approaching each other. Yeah, and the interesting thing is random access times. That's very important to understand with SSDs. So we are now at something like 0 0.05, 0 0.05, milliseconds, which is 50 microseconds. And this is 50 microseconds, 50 microseconds. And this is roughly by a factor 100 faster, by a factor 100 faster random access times, then you will find it on a hard disk drive. That's very important to keep in mind because SSDs are often a cure for situations where random access is slowing down the system. So if you have a random access bottleneck in your system, so to say, you should think about first whether that can be healed by replacing hard drives with SSDs. Very often that is the right remedy, that is the right way to fix it by killing it with iron. Uh, killing it with iron, that's the famous saying, killing it with iron which means we get some better hardware. And sometimes it's not required to buy a super expensive server. Sometimes it's as easy as replacing the hard disk drives with some SSDs in the right places. And then maybe you feel already this, this factor 100 faster random access times. And as I said before, it's not only that, that you get 100 times random access on a specific address. It's also that you can send different random read and write requests in parallel. And they can be processed in parallel by today's devices. And which performance you get by that, I will explain in another video. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Dit, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.